Hello everybody! Today, we are not driving too far. We're only going to brave the Miami traffic for about 32 miles as we visit Homestead, Florida, located at the southern tip of the South Florida metropolitan area, the gateway to the Florida Keys. We've been there before, but this time we're going to visit a few places we've never been to and repeat some old favorites. Riding in my RV, my RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV yeah. Here we are, arriving once again at Southern Comfort RV Resort I see Jim already has his drone up in the air Okay, we've made it here to Southern Comfort RV Resort. Beautiful afternoon here in Homestead, Florida, and tonight is the, the meetup, the, the Homestead meetup. So I'd say in about an hour, we're gonna start heading out there. And tomorrow we'll, we'll do some touring around the area. By the way, they do have a tiki bar here. And if you remember, I sang karaoke here last year. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Let's look for Jim and Barb's rig, because he is the designated driver. Off we go, into the sunset. Onto the Redlands, where Schnebly Winery and Miami Brewing Company are located. And here we are. The meetup was a total success. I gotta start doing more of this, of course, when it is safe and appropriate. There was only one caveat, and that was that right up to the day before the meetup, Miami Brewing and Schnebly Winery, same company by the way, were Harvest Host members, so many people, including myself, were hoping to spend the night there after a few beers, you know. But apparently something happened, and they are no longer Harvest Host members. Big bummer. On to happier and better things. I also got to sing karaoke and even won the first prize. Yeah, it was such a fun night. Well, good morning, almost good afternoon. It is one of those rainy days in South Florida. Everything is wet. Oh, but what to do on a day like this? Well, let's go eat, shall we? All right, we're gonna go for a quick little bite because it's the day is ugly, it's cloudy, it's still kind of raining on and off. But we don't want to stay inside the camper all day. And here we are. It is called Shivers Barbecue, and it looks like the place has been here forever. Since 1950, actually, according to the website. Mmm, decisions, decisions. It has communal seating, like many other barbecue joints. Mmm, baby back ribs. Well, that certainly hit the right spot. And uh, now we're going back to the campground. But yeah, this was one of those places that I had a star in my map. Quarter mile, turn left on the Southwest 288th Street. And I have no idea who told me about this place or, or why, but it was good, it was good. Not the best I've had, but it was good. And that was our whole Friday, in a nutshell. Hopefully tomorrow the weather will cooperate and we'll be able to hang out with Jim and Barb. Good morning. 
Not necessarily perfect weather here this morning, but at least it's not raining. Not the most striking of landscapes, but hey, that's our beloved flat South Florida. Here's looking south towards the Everglades, and if the FAA would let me fly high enough, we could probably see the Florida Keys. At least Key Largo. I just realized the swimming pool has the shape of a piano. All right, let's begin the day with something sweet. And believe it or not, I have never been to Nasberry Farms, a total institution here in South Florida dating back to 1956. And they only open in winter. And let me tell you, I don't blame them. It is too hot any other time of the year. Here we are and they are very busy as usual. I've passed by here before and they usually have long lines. Today is not so bad actually. This is Nasberry Farms and they seem to be pretty busy. You see, they have three lines, one for the bakery, one for the produce, one for the milkshakes. I think we're going for the bakery. Or you can pick your own tomatoes. It is cash only. I hope I have cash. But yeah, they've got everybody back there picking tomatoes and berries and, you know, it's basically free labor. And then they charge you for it, which is, <laughs> Perfect, but people love to do that, and uh, they're supposed to have some of the best. Uh, I mean, I've tasted them, I just never had them here, the, the cinnamon rolls. Yeah, they have all kinds of stuff here. All right, I'm getting hungry. Let's let's sample some of the of the local baked goods. Let's give it a taste test. But we're taking some for the road, you know. On the way back, we're gonna drive by historic downtown Homestead. the historic Seminole Theater, originally Miami's Air Dome Theater. In 1916, they dismantled it, put it on a train, and brought it here, where they rebuilt it. Hmm, is this new? Actually, it is called Homestead Station. Let's go to the campground, take a break. Ooh, check that out! Cool plane! And there goes another one. Oh, and another one. Next, we're going to Biscayne National Park, which has the peculiarity of being mostly underwater. Coral reefs, islands, and the mangrove forest along the coast is what this park is all about. The best way to explore it would be by boat, and had we planned better come earlier, we would have done that, but today we're just gonna explore the dry portion of the park. Oh, here we are, Biscayne National Park. I don't think I've ever been here, but I could be wrong. That's pretty neat, they have the mangroves and the wildlife. Let's uh, go inside the visitor center. And here we are, inside the visitor center, very nice, as they usually are. Biscayne National Park, I think, is one of the only or the only national park that is actually underwater, most of it. So most of it you can't really see. It's, uh... Oh, look at that. Fly, pelican! Besides the flora and the fauna, national parks usually have a section dedicated to human history. Very cool exhibits they have here. It's really, really well done. Hmm, sponges. Amazingly enough, you can see downtown Miami. All the way out there. I bet you can see the place where I used to work. Yeah, you can. That's the Mandarin Oriental right there in the center of the screen. Okay, these are probably the boats we would have taken. 
There it is. The out there. The Miami Dade the County point. landfill. Right there, one of the highest points in South Florida, probably. Yep, definitely not flat. Let's do the jetty walk, which is really all we can do in the dry part of the park. Going to the mangrove. And there is Turkey Point where we get all of our electricity here in South Florida. We are wedged in between the, the landfill and the nuclear power plant. Right here in there. And there's this uh, this trail that goes all the way to the end there, so we're gonna take it and uh, here we are walking all the way to the end. The edge of civilization. Can't really see it from here. We have reached the end of the jetty. Hmm, that's Key Biscayne over the horizon. I wish we could see the Cape Florida lighthouse too. Well, this was pretty cool here, Biscayne National Park. I had never actually been to this uh, spot and it looks like the sun's coming out. Look at that, right as we are uh, almost uh, leaving here. And uh, well, we're gonna continue exploring the area. And uh, let's see. And one of these days we're gonna take that boat that goes all the way out to the, to the, to the coral reef. It's, this is like the beginning of the Florida Keys here, then they, 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 they begin here and then they go, they go all the way down. But that, that coral reef is right there. The, the only live coral reef, I believe, in North America. So we're gonna continue exploring now. And that's when we ran into the Moss family. Let's junk more journey on YouTube. Always cool to meet other content creators on the road. All over this area, you will find all these fruit stands. It's a homestead thing. Next, we're going to the Homestead Motorsports Complex. Actually, right next door to the AMR Motorplex. We're gonna race some go-karts. They also have a professional track here, by the way. And today, they happen to be having a competition. They are going much faster than it looks on camera. Actually, you can tell they're going pretty fast, can't you? The assistant manager, Sander, super cool guy, he got us some backstage passes and come to us a couple of races. That was really nice of him. Well, here we're getting a little behind the scenes look at uh, the racetrack. And these are all the, the pit areas, you know, where, where they're getting everything ready. It's really cool to see, actually. Wow, yeah, that's fast. Once again, really cool to be able to get this rare behind the scenes look. It is our turn now. Here we go. I've only done this once or twice before, perhaps, so wish me luck. These ones actually go 45 miles per hour, which in a go-kart, it feels pretty fast.
That was so much fun. I came in last place, of course. Well, that was a lot of fun. I want to thank Sander uh, for inviting us here to the AMR, uh, the AMR Homestead Miami Motorplex. And uh, yeah. now we're going to go to Key Largo for dinner. You know, we didn't want to have dinner before driving that thing. So uh, now we're going to go to Key Largo and uh, the adventure continues. We're going to take Car Sound Road because I want to stop at what would be unofficially the southeasternmost point in the contiguous mainland United States, if you don't count any of the keys or islands. And that would be right here, right before the first bridge. Very challenging to fly the drone here. There seems to be some kind of interference. Besides, I think the Mavic Pro is getting old. This is it. That's the first bridge. Well, yeah, that drone flight was an epic fail, but in any case, this is Alabama Jacks here, famous place here on Card Sound Road, which is the alternate route as you go into uh, Key Largo, Florida. And according to some people, this, and as you know, I've been trying to hit like the southwesternmost point of the United States, the westernmost point to north, whatever, all the, all the extreme cardinal points. And this, according to many people, might be the southwestern, southeastern most point on mainland United States. Because after that bridge, it's the Florida Keys. So, um, yeah, this is it. We're going to the Florida Keys, if only for a few hours. We're going to this place called Gilbert's, very famous, right by the entrance to Key Largo. In fact, technically it is on Cross Key, right before you get to Key Largo. The show should start soon. And the music is provided by The Dropouts. They are a local band and we've been meaning to come to see them for a long time. It is actually a great coincidence they are here. Now, the main reason we came was famous magician Michael Trix. So The Dropouts are just the icing on the cake, if you will. Illy's fish tacos have finally arrived. And my fried fish too, so... It is dinner and a show. Jim has been telling me about the rocking magic of Michael Tricks for over a year now, so it is great to finally see him live. Normally, he doesn't allow video, but he did let me take a few clips. And this one, I did have to change the background music. Now, let me tell you, that was a great show. World class. Time to go. And let me tell you, today was action packed. And we are exhausted, so good night. Robert is here. Well, yes, I am.
Hello everybody, no visit to Hampstead is complete if you don't come to Robert is here fruit stand and here we are with Robert himself. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? Well, we gotta grease up with the hand sanitizer. We're gonna start you with the mame. This yeah, is what it looks like on the outside. Grows on a tree. It takes 25 years if you plant the seed that came out of here. 25 years to harvest your first fruit. Your blossom, when it blooms on the tree, blooms, and when it matures, 18 months to two years, you have to scratch them. And if they scratch red right under the skin, you know you can harvest it. It's not like going out and picking an orange when you see the color, or see, you know, and usually they take six to eight weeks or nine weeks or 10 weeks for things to mature on the tree. 18 months to two years to hard to mature. And it's really, really a rich, magnificent flavor. And it has so much energy packed into it. It's kind of like a uh, one of those energy drinks that they sell and it's really garbage. This is nature's way. Let's take it off the skin. You can eat it off the skin too. You can just eat everything there. I just love it. Oh, and this is magnificent. It's like you know, I've never, I've, I had never had the fruit. It's I like had the shake many times. I'm Cuban, so you know it's yeah. a staple. But it's I like a flan or a cheesecake. Mm. I just love them. So rich and so sweet, man. Yes. I eat mame every morning as a breakfast. It just carries me all day long. Mm. Really great. This one here. We grow a red variety. We grow a red variety. Mm -hmm. And the red one of these has a kiwi, raspberry, and strawberry kind of a flavor. And they're really good. There's a red one with a white flesh. And the red one with a white flesh is absolutely tasteless. And that's what a lot of people are getting now, is the red one with the white flesh. And then they never try them again. This one here comes in when we don't have any. This one will not grow here. Absolutely will not grow. And they figured out there's a there's an industry that grows these here. And they have figured out that this one needs 1,100 feet of altitude. And we only have eight feet. Yeah. <laughs> and it, go ahead and take the, the whole, whole thing. thing. Whole thing yeah. Just, yeah. And this is? You want a uh, pitaya, brand. yellow dragon. You want to try one? You don't like that? It's very good. I know. You wouldn't take me. I've been here 60 years. It's if I can't very, tell you something and you believe it, you got to believe. I, don't, I will never lead you wrong. Now, this is a mango. We grow mangoes here exactly like these. This is a Kent, a Kent mango. And I believe this is the best, absolute best flavor. Has no strings in it. It, there is no better mango grown. Ours come in in July. Now when you get ours, ours are a little better than these. But oh wow! Isn't that a good mango? Amazing. Yeah, the texture is different. They're definitely different than what you get at the. Well, the grocery store they generally sell you the Tommy Atkins. They're beautiful and red, but they taste terrible and they are awful as drinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we're gonna try Guanabana. The mm. unknown is uh, August, mid-August to mid-September. And uh, they're sweet. They have a very similar appearance to this here. Yes, I, I used to eat them as a, as a kid uh, back in Cuba. And uh, I remember, I haven't had them, I hadn't had them since. So our unknown come in, you can't ship them from around the world. They just don't have enough legs. Yeah. This guanabana comes in from uh, Grenada. These come from Grenada right now. Ours come in um, half of June and half of July. And then again, we have a second harvest, which comes in about uh, October, November between. And they... Guanabana have 
taken off crazy since they found out that they cure cancer. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, a lot of leaves. Yeah, this is. A lot of leaves. We have oil made from the tree. Wait, I haven't had this in ages, man. Yeah. I haven't had this yet. Very good. Uh, that's a short little trip through through the tropics. If you need more, we can maybe find a papaya for you. But uh, you know, we have tamarindo. I don't know if you like tamarindo. A lot of people don't like it. I'm, I'm not a great fan. It's, it's, it's kind of it's sour, sour, right? It's yeah. too sour for my I taste. have a sweet one, but the sweet ones are not as good as the sour ones. Because this is like a, a warhead candy or a uh, Sour Patch Kid. You eat everything but the strings and the seed you spit out. Okay. But it is sour. Strings. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try yeah. this. I'm, I'm not a big tamarindo guy, guys. Yeah. He's got to try I'm it. I'm going to give it a try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things. So you never, ever really have a home base. You're well, I, do, I, do, I do, I do, I do have a home base in Miami. Yeah. But uh, I, I travel half the time. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I go all over the country. You know, Very and, uh, good. That's pretty cool. We and have, my name is Robert, so I always make there the you joke. Go. I always make the joke. Good that's name, it. right? Robert is I here. always make the joke. How do they know I'm here? I got a sign. Yeah. And then the second time, I, this Robert is here, but no relation. But there you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for for showing us this. Uh, we're gonna do this this tour around the tropics. Very good. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. And talk about a perfect location for a business. We are here on the on the crossroads. There's a stop sign, and everybody who goes to Everglade National Park has to go through here. And of course, here's uh, our friends Jim and Barb from Ohio. Here I am with Robert Jr. Hello. Nice t-shirt. Thank you so Good much. Good to meet you too. Likewise. All right. I was, I was speaking to your dad and this, this place is amazing, man. It's How a unique you? story. I mean, where else in the world can you put a six-year-old on the side of the road trying to sell produce? And is that how it started? Yeah, how? my grandfather was a cucumber farmer and he brought all his cucumbers to the broker down the road. And the, the broker told my grandpa, look, you could, you could pay the storage fee in the cooler for uh, more money than he could afford. Mm -hmm or just dump all the damn cucumbers and save the boxes for next year's crop. Right. And so rather than just dumping them all, he figured he had a six-year-old little boy, my dad, sitting at home doing nothing anyways. Uh, we'll stick him out here and yeah. see if we could recoup some of the cucumber sales. Mm. Well, that's stuck awesome. him out here in the same very corner and didn't sell a thing. So grandma figured there can't be that many people coming to and from the Everglades National Park at a stop sign mm. that wouldn't stop and help her little boy. Yeah. So she figured so. maybe no one saw them. So, so they, they spray painted on a hurricane shutter. Robert is here. Robert is here. And damn if it didn't take off. Damn. And then the local neighborhood farmers passing by would see my dad here every every day mm -hmm. doing his little hustle as a six year old little boy. And they got behind him and say, hey man, look, you keep showing up, we'll keep giving. So the first year of business, my dad didn't pay for anything. Oh wow. Local farmers, neighborhood farmers got behind them and pushed the movement yeah. of getting them off the yeah. ground. Oh, Here man, we are, 60 years later, the same guy on the same 60 corner years. doing the same thing. You know, man, what a great story. You guys are an institution here. Yeah. Everybody, now, nowadays, everybody who goes to the Everglades right. knows who, who Robert is. But everyone thinks it's a, a, a blueprint, written down business plan, you know. It mm -hmm. all just happened on happenstance. Ser serendipitously like that. Yeah. just happened. You know, you yeah. get a, a mango with a bad spot, you cut off the bad spot, make a milkshake yeah. out of it. Mm -hmm. And then the animals on the back eat the rest. Right, you have all this exotic fruit, you know. We, try, we really try and hang our hat on the unusual and the exotic. Yeah. You know? Vichis, Longes, Jack, yeah. Rex Jambu, mm -hmm. Monstera mm -hmm. Deliciosa, all yeah. kinds of yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, 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 this is like the doorway to the Caribbean, so you have like right. all, this, all this stuff from And that's what's really cool, the is that a lot of our, our customers are travelers, and they may have lived in America for 20 years or so, and mm -hmm. then they walk in and they can find the Nisporo, or the Mame, or right. the Guanaba, Yeah, that's something that, that you, home, it's yeah. like, man, it's, or Jabata Cava, something that you never right. see at public yeah. show when you get exactly. to your Walmart, yeah. and you can find it here in our that's store. Awesome, that's awesome, man. That's It's great to meet you. And your All right, you. let's come to the back area here because you know it's 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 the the the, the fruit stand is like a destination unto itself, as 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 Robert Jr. told us. You know they started small, but it's been growing and growing. And um, even two or three years ago, the last time I was here, this place um, wasn't as, as as big as it is now. Mmm, sugar cane and some guarapo. I got my mame shake, and uh, what do you guys get? She got a brain freeze, I think. I do. I got an orange. <laughs> orange. Banana, pineapple, and coconut. All right. Well, cheers, guys. We're going somewhere else now, right? 
Yep. yep. To the um, outpost. Yeah. I'm gonna need a spoon for this one. That's how it started. Well, this last bit was during those last few days of the old normal, before the blight took over, which, unfortunately, cut this winter-spring 2020 series short. We had great plans for the shoulder season in Florida, when it is still not so scorching hot, not yet, but by that time the snowbirds have started going north and it is easier to find campsite at prime locations. 2020, the year the earth stood still. But life goes on, the adventure continues, if perhaps a little differently. One of the first places we're going to visit after the lockdown with the new Winnebago Micro Mini is Marathon, about halfway to Key West. But more about that on the next one. Until then, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the road. Riding it